So I guess we have to separate out also the chronic use, chronic use versus acute use. I think acute use resolution of inflammation sounds great. But I think we've always said, well, gee, even if we push fish oils to a certain amount, are we going to inhibit our normal inflammatory response, which we need to heal? Mm -hmm. So if we stop it or we inhibit it, could we be hurting ourselves? I think what we need to keep in mind is actually two things. First of all, in the, in the ICU, for example, scenario where the patient is at a critical level, um, it's probably too late to come in and intervene with fish oils. And I think, you know, history has taught us that fish oils don't really work very well in these scenarios. There have been many clinical trials and they've never really had great outcomes. And that's probably because the body is, the, the immune system, the immune response, which is critical for the biosynthesis and the production of these mediators, is compromised enough. And this is where we need a direct pharmacological approach using the mediator itself rather than uh. the substrate to target the host response. At the same time, I don't think that in, in, normal, in normal patients that are not that compromised, these mediators will actually still have beneficial actions um, because they don't inhibit the response. And this is the, this is the key difference between our classical pharmacopoeia, where we have inhibition, and we, like with these meat, like, like steroids, yeah. non-steroid or anti-inflammatory, a lot of the no novel uh, biologicals, anti-TNF, anti-IL-1, where we have direct inhibition of specific arms of the inflammatory response. These mediators don't do that. These mediators acti co actively counter-regulate <coughs> the inflammatory response. So they activate endogenous programs that are naturally present in our everyday life to limit the inflammatory response so that it does what it needs to do because the inflammatory response ultimately it's protective. It's there for a reason and we, we have constant inflammation in our bone. It's important for remodeling in specific tissues. It's, it happens based on just you know, damage, slight damage. If you contact something, you create a bruise, that's inflammation. So it's very important that it's there. Um, but these, what these mediators do is they instruct the leukocytes and the local environment not to overactivate, to just clear the damage and they also promote the next step. So it's not just clearing, it's also promoting wound repair and regeneration, which is very important, which is again what the classical pharmacopoeia doesn't do. It just stops at inhibiting the inflammatory response. So we get two arms of, of healing the, um, the damage. We have the um, recruitment part where we stop excessive recruitment but we also instruct the environment to, to repair. But what about the chronic inflammatory condition? You know, what do we have 30% of the American population now with uh, BMIs of 35 and over? They've all got rheumatoid arthritis, they've all got joints that hurt, they've all got asthma, refractive, refractive airway disease. So where do we stand in those areas? You want to start? Yeah, I mean, I, I, you know, as I said a little earlier, I think the, the chronic, for me, the chronic inflammation thing is an even easier sell um, because of the fact that you sort of have this dysregulated, um, you know, s sort of smoldering inflammatory cycle going on. And, you know, we already have buy-in with the concept. You know, many of these, especially rheumatologic Crohn's. diseases or Crohn's, those sorts of things, we're already doing some sort of anti-inflammatory um, component anyway. So I think... You know, an, an agent like an SPM that, that does both that and kind of helps the healing and helps the, the thing kind of gives you more bang for your buck even. For us, it'd be, in GI, it would be inflammatory bowel disease. The um, liver. Are the, is the immunologic reaction there different than these acute processes we talked about, you know, granulomatous disease, mm -hmm. for example? Uh, you've got bacteria generating a response. You've got genetics that are playing a role. Uh, do these SPMs see, uh, have a role in treating this disease? Can we break the cycle, basically? Right. Yeah. So yeah. the way we think about it, actually, is uh, just to go back a step, mm -hmm. is that chronic inflammation is actually recurrent acute inflammation. Mm -hmm. So the process is, it's not a completely different thing. It, it's, right. it's, it's acute inflammation that just doesn't go away, so it fails to resolve. And because of that, we're targeting the same cells. It's just that these cells don't respond to the endogenous programs. Mm -hmm. And I think that because of that, and based on the clinical evidence, the, the preclinical evidence, sorry, that there is, um, that in 
models of obesity, for example, where you have either the, G, the, in the mouse that lacks the uh, leptin receptor or high fat diets where you have chronic, chronic inflammation at, at, the, at, the, at the adipose level, you get resolution of inflammation, you get reduction in the local systemic markers of inflammation, you get increase in adiponectin, which is a critical, um, uh, a critical, mark, a critical uh, host protective um, uh, mm -hmm. agent. You also have in, in models of inflammatory bowel disease or uh, non-alcoholic non fatty liver disease, mm -hmm. you have protection, you have reduced cirrhosis in, in the liver, you also protect from bowel shortening in the gut in models of TMBS colitis because you regulate the inflammatory response, you don't have that, that destruction of the mucosal surface, you also keep barrier function so you avoid what can become then later on um, bacterial breach and maybe even lead into septicemia. Um, so there's multiple levels as, as we have in, in acute inflammation where we're targeting the white blood cell, we're targeting the vasculature mm -hmm. to, re to reduce vascular permeability, mm -hmm. you're targeting the stromal cells to, to promote repair. Same thing with, the, uh, with chronic inflammation because ultimately it's still acute, it's a, a version of acute inflammation mm -hmm. just doesn't go away. Mm -hmm. We're targeting the same, the same cells and we're instructing them to actually now move on to this res resolution phase. Because what we found is that, you know, the classic icosanoids are actually important in promoting what we call lipid mediated class switching which is the parasynthesis of these pro-resolving mediators. Mm -hmm. And this is where a lot of the non-steroidals become resolution toxic because by blocking the prostaglandins, the leukotrienes, mm -hmm. you're actually preventing this switching. Mm -hmm. You're preventing the upregulation of enzymes and leukocytes that are involved in biosynthesis of these pro-resolving mediators. So by going to the other side, you're, you're curtailing that problem and promoting the resolution directly.